What's up guys, welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Auto. And today I'm gonna do a follow up video about the electrical system. If you haven't watched that video yet, go ahead and click the link up here. Last week's video was about the electrical system in your car and basically just so you would understand how everything works together. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the relay specifically. So here we have a five pin relay. This is typically what you're gonna be looking at when you talk about a relay. This one right here is also a five pin relay. If you look back onto last week's video, you'll see that I'm running the power and the ground for both sides of the circuit from the same source. And that's not typically what you're gonna run into on an automotive circuit because one of the reasons why you would want to use a relay is because you'd be able to control a heavy side load with a very small amount of current. So with that in mind, I went ahead and redid another circuit for you guys just to explain the purpose of the relay better. Now I have a nine volt battery, which is that one right there. And it's running the LEDs, which is this load from a 12 volt battery source. So right here, it kind of looks like a mess, but here's my battery for the switch side. Off of that comes the power and the ground. So following the power is gonna go across here. I have the fuse and then that's gonna go over to the switch. Now the switch is gonna allow the current to travel into the relay and then come out of the relay through the black wire and all the way back to this battery. So this switch is working this side of the circuit to turn on the LED and turn it off. Now going on to the other side of the circuit, which is gonna be the load side, you can see my battery. And then right here, I have the positive line and that is coming through the blue wire. It's going through the relay and then it's coming out the yellow wire into the load and then it goes off through the black wire back into the black wire of that side of the circuit. So since we already went through it on the physical side of it, here it is on the wiring diagram. We got the battery. It's going through the fuse and then through the switch into the coil and then all the way back to the battery again. And on this side with the 12 volt battery, it's going through a fuse that's inside the box. And then it goes into the pin 30, in which case right here, when the switch is off, it's going into 87A, which is our red wire, but that's not going anywhere because we only want the light to turn on when you hit the switch. So once you energize the switch side of the circuit, this contact will close on the other leg and the current is gonna flow out of 87, which is the yellow wire, go through the load and back to the ground for that circuit. So just to demonstrate how the red line has power when the LED doesn't, I connected a test light right there on the red line. So as you see right now, the light is on because the LED is off. So the relay is working and it's passing the current to 87A, which is the red one. And then as soon as I switch the LED on, the current's gonna jump from the red wire to the yellow one and turn on the LED. So by doing this, you can do many things with the relay. If you wanted to have the switch backwards, you could put the LED running off of this one, just like I did with the test light. So it's always on when this, when the switch is off. Now in this circuit, since you always have power coming out of the red wire, you would want to remove this wire from the harness, or you could take this off and snip it and tape it together or with the wire nut just have it like that so there is no current so if you're trying to wire your own relay and you wanted to remove either the 87 a or 87 then you'd come over here and look at the relay and right here we're seeing that the the red one is the one we want to get rid of so that's what these little notches here are for you can stick something pointy or a little screwdriver or something and pull this little tab and the whole thing comes off. This is the little tab that you wanted to push in. So you're gonna stick it in here and then push the tab in and that's gonna allow the terminal to slide out. Another big advantage of having a relay is that it allows you to use any power to control the circuit. And but what I mean by that is that this could be a switched power. So this, this could have current only when your car is on or you could have constant power and then have it always work. For example, if you wanted switched power, let's say for your windows, so your window regulator only goes up and down when the car key is turned on, then you would find that circuit for the key. And then when you turn the key on, 
you should see power and you're going to grab your power from there. Now what that would mean is that the window motor or the window regulator on that side will only go up and down if the key is turned on. So now getting back to the relay itself, you can see that I put 85 and 86 right here, 30 and 87A and 87. Now where did I get those numbers from? Here I have another relay and as you can see the pins say 30, 87A, 87 and 86 and 85. If I remove this relay from the harness you're gonna notice that right here as well you're gonna see the pins 30, 87, 87A, 85 and 86. So if you're looking at this relay again you're gonna see that the crank goes from 30 to 87 always 87a and then 85 and 86 are the are the switch so when you switch this on the current's going to jump over it's from 30 to 87 so if you're looking at your relay from the bottom side you're going to see this is 85 and 86 these two pins are going to be your control side or the switch side and then pin 30 is going to go to 87a as a normally closed circuit and then once the switch activates it's going to go from 30 to 87. So here we are at the circuit again and I've got everything rewired and I got the power source on. You're going to see that the circuit works. Now if you wanted to test it, let's say your fuel pump wasn't running or the window motor wasn't working or the starter wasn't starting, then you wanted to check the relay. You could hear it when you turn in, when you turn on the switch, you should be able to hear the relay clicking and if you grab it and you touch it you should be able to feel it as well if you can't hear the relay working and if you can't feel it clicking then it's time to get a test light and you're gonna ground it to any bolt on the vehicle that you can get your hands on in my case I'm gonna use the clamp itself the ground clamp now to test the relay you want to look at the pins again so you can see which one is which in this case, we know that 30 is going to be the hot at all times. This one should have power. And then 87 or 87A is going to be the load. So to check to see if we have power, you're going to go to pin 30. So you take the relay off and look at the bottom. And the 30 is going to be the one right here in the middle, the bottom one. So back right here where the relay goes, this is going to be pin 30. And you want to check for a hot at all times, in which case we have it. So once you've seen that your hot at all times is okay, then you can check the other side of the circuit. In this case, it's gonna be supplying power to this side, and that's gonna check to see if your load is working. So right there you can see the LEDs turning on and my test light is turning on, because I'm supplying power to this. You could also grab a wire and jump it from this end. Once you've checked the load side of, this, of the system and that's all checking out, then you can check the control side, in which case I'm going to put the ground right here on the control. And then you're going to check to see if this is giving out power as well, so in which case it is. And if you wanted to check the ground for that side of the circuit as well, I just plug it over here on the power. And then I'm going to check right here and there I'm supplying power to it and there is a good ground. You want to make sure that the test light is lighting up bright, nice and bright, especially when you're checking out the grounds because if it were lighting up very dim then you could have corrosion somewhere on the ground side. Maybe you need to clean the frame where it's getting the ground from. And finally to test the relay itself to make sure you have a good relay you want to Put your multimeter, you want to get a multimeter and put it on continuity and make sure that it does have continuity. Okay, so now that you verify that you do, you go to pin 86 and 85 and touch both of them. Now that's just the control so they should have continuity. Now knowing that the, the way that the relay is wired, you know that 30 and 87A also have continuity when the relay is off and in which case you're going to touch both of them and make sure that they do. Then you also want to check 30 and 87 
Now remember these ones should not have continuity in which case they don't so we know that this is good so far. Now to test the last part of the relay I took off the power and ground from the harness so here I have power and ground onto the 85 and 86 and as soon as I touch it you can hear it clicking so you know that's a good thing but once I've placed them now we know that it's connected and 87 and 30 should have continuity once you've done all those tests now you know how to check if a relay is good and you know how to check if the wiring to it is good and you know how to check the wiring diagram and understand the whole circuit. So with all that being said, I hope you guys liked the video and remember to like, comment, share, subscribe and all those other goodies. Thank you.